Hello again, Guardians, and welcome back to another Destiny episode. This is episode number two of the Lost Foundry series between four foundries that originally founded the tower and just disappeared. The only things we have to actually reclaim them are exotics. But before we get into that, I wanted to go over that I am giving away a thousand silver this week on the channel, and all you have to do to enter and win is be subscribed to this channel, show your support by liking this video, and leave a comment down below on what foundry has been your favorite so far in this series. We have two episodes. So this episode is about Tex Mechanica, and if you missed the very first episode, Casoid, the link is in the description of this video. Now to get into this, this is all thanks to David Rowell, so I'll be linking his art station and all of his concept designs down in the description of this video as well. So go and give him a follow on his art station, he's got some really awesome artwork. Alongside this, he is crediting Bungie for a lot of the sources of the information and design concepts he's used to create the models he's created. Moving in, I also wanted to recap a comment left on episode number one about how I didn't bring up Hawkeye. There were six original foundries, Hawkeye being one of the newest that weren't actually a part of the original six. So I left it out because the original six foundries are as followed. Nadir, Dato, Omalon, Tex Mechanica, Kasoid, and Soros. Hawkeye was a fairly newer one and isn't actually a part of the series. Now the Lost Foundry series removes Suros and Omelon because as we already know, Suros and Omelon are very prevalent right now in the game and they do exist and they are making weapons as of currently. The only reason why we're talking about Kasoid, Nadir, Dato, and Tex Mechanica in this series, in a series of four episodes, is because they have exotics that exist but no other weapons and they're not creating weapons currently. So the only thing we have to really go off from are their exotics which makes it fairly interesting. So as we all know, Tex Mechanica, as we're going over in this video, has the last word, the first curse, and the chaperone. All three exotics from this series, and we're going to be going over what their ideas and concepts might have looked like if they had other weapons available in the game. Now thanks to David, the very first weapon is the Apache Mark 47 Auto Rifle. As you all can see, it's got the similarities to the Zalo Supercell or an AK-47. He kind of took that design because the AK-47 would fit the theme of the old western feel for the chaperone, last word, and the first curse. Alongside this, it's got an iron sight red dot, which is really interesting, and it gives it that futuristic vibe, even though Tex Mechanica tries to go with the old western feel. With that, where you hold the barrel is going to say Tex Mechanica on it in wood engraving with gold lettering. We've also got a bowl next to the trigger and grip. We've also got a magazine that has a blue light down it to show you how much ammunition is left in the gun. As you can see, this gun is full. Moving on to the next gun, we've got the Scout Rifle. Scout Rifle being a lot more futuristic vibe to it, but it still has that black and gold feel. We've got Tex Mechanica on the grip, we've got the bull on the back side of the gun, and then we've got the blue light showing that the weapon is fully reloaded. Now this gun, the Eagle Eye Mark 46 Scout Rifle, I would actually say doesn't fit along with the Tex Mechanica feel. Just because you write Tex Mechanica on it and put the bull there, it doesn't seem like it's a part of the faction. But if you move on to David's concept designs and you keep moving through the list, you'll notice that this fits inside of the design scheme once you've gone through all of his weapons. So let's move on. Next one is going to be the Pulse Rifle Gambler's Debt Mark 37. As you can see, this resembles a lot more from the last previous gun, the Scout Rifle. This has a Scout Rifle feel to it, but is a Pulse Rifle instead. So I do think he needs to do a redesign on what this gun should look like. It doesn't look like a Pulse Rifle to me. It looks more like a Scout Rifle, especially with the barrel, the way it's set up. Again, it's got Tex Mechanica written down the side of it. This time it does not have the Bull logo, and it does have the blue light to show how much ammunition is in the gun. Moving on to the next gun is going to have to be the hand cannon. Now, this gun obviously is based around the last word in the first curse, but it does have some differences. So, with this one, you've got a normal standard revolver style weapon. It's called the Dusty Gentleman Mark 44. It's a hand cannon. It has blue for where the bullets would be inside of the magazine. And this gun here has the text mechanic written on the top and it's got the bull. But if you put this right up against 
what the last word and the first curse look like, there are several different changes. But he did try to keep the style of what those two looked like, except making this one a little bit more legendary feel of a weapon instead of an exotic. Moving on to the next one is going to be the Bullwhip Mark 35 shotgun. As you can see, the sight represents the sight that was shown on the auto rifle. This time around, though, we've got a buckshot kind of shotgun. It kind of resembles what the chaperone would look like if you made the chaperone a pump action. And I really do enjoy the feel of what this would be. Um, again, they've got bullets down the side that glow blue. There is a nice blue glowing vibe to all the bullets in these guns. And I kind of enjoy it, especially with the black wood and gold. Now this is the shotgun. Moving on to the next one is going to have to be the sidearm. Tex Mechanica as a sidearm. Now this is the best looking gun I have seen for a sidearm. I just love it. It's one of those short little gimpy pistols that you would have in the old Wild West. And if you were a cowboy or a cowgirl that was off fighting, you would normally whip one of these out from a good hiding spot and then kill a man. And this is a fairly interesting design. And it's very elegant. I actually would recommend making this into one of the next exotics for an exotic sidearm for the faction Tex Mechanica. So really awesome. It's called Red Right Hand Mark 38. Moving on to the next one, we've got my favorite out of this entire series being the Scalp Hunter Mark 12 or the Sniper Rifle. And this had a lot of design features put into it. First off, the bipod. Bipod looks great. Obviously, you don't really use bipods inside of Destiny, but with the bipod there, it just adds another feature to this gun. Alongside that, we've got the blue lights down off of the bipod. We have the blue light also on the magazine, showing that it is fully reloaded. We've also got gold embroidery all down the side of the barrel. We've got the giant bull logo up on the top scope. We've also got Tex Mechanica next to the bipod. And further down to the end of the barrel are how many kills you've gotten with the gun. As you can see, we've killed 12 people. That's just a really nice feature. I like the fact that they have cross marks out of how many people you've shot with this gun and have killed. And the sight for this is a lot different than any sight I've seen on any sniper rifle in the game of Destiny. And I just enjoy this weapon. I do feel like this should be a Tex Mechanica exotic sniper rifle in the game. Now, I do believe they should bring in a legendary form of it as well and bring down the tone of how fancy this one looks and make a legendary form. But hey, for those pro snipers out there, what would the perks be on the Tex Mechanica sniper rifle if it was an exotic? Let me know down below in the comment section on what you think they should be. Moving on to the next weapon is going to be the Frontier Mark 15 Fusion Rifle. Now this Fusion Rifle is big. It looks huge, but it's not too big. It's not actually as big as it seems it would be, but compared to the sizes of the rest of the guns in these concept arts, it does look like a fairly big gun. It's actually a standard sized Fusion Rifle. It just seems to look big just because of the design and the bulkiness of the design, but you can see that there's a bull right down the side and the magazine does glow blue and it's got a wooden stock and it does have that standard futuristic vibe to it but also putting some features of the old wild wild west into the gun thanks to that grip and the trigger so pretty awesome there's the fusion rifle guys so moving on to the final weapon in this series is going to have to be the heavy machine gun there's no rocket launcher in this series once again, there was no rocket launchers available in the Wild Wild West, so we wouldn't want to really put a rocket launcher in the series either. So the Tex Mechanica Stag Coach Mark 40. It looks like a Tommy gun. It, it is a Tommy gun. I can't even I can't even lie about that. It's a Tommy gun machine gun. Wouldn't it be cool to run around with a machine gun inside of Destiny that looks like a Tommy gun? Now, kind of representing all of this i would really love to run this with the no land beyond so i'd really like this to be a i would really like this to be a legendary but it's so bizarre in its design 
that it would probably end up being an exotic if it actually existed in the game. So what do you guys think? What should the perks be for this exotic machine gun? Link them down below in the comment section and let me know. And there you have it, Guardians. That's all the information for David Rowell's Tex Mechanica concept designs for his Lost Foundry series of the tower. So if you enjoyed this video, drop a like, share with your friends, and also stay tuned for episode 3 and 4 on the channel in the future. And also, subscribe to the channel for future content. Stay violent, be privileged, we'll see you all in the next episode.